edition of Cannabis in Canada with Jason Wilcox coming to you once again from British Columbia, BC. Come on, smoke a joint with me. Okay, my friends, this is what's up. Let's go back to some old school teaching. Just talk a little bit about the teaching. Okay, um, one of the first people to bring you uh, EC meters and teach you how to use them. To bring in pH meters, teach you how to use them. You know, we done this over 200 videos ago, and we're getting a lot of comments lately about how we should or shouldn't teach people about this stuff. Um, so, yeah, maybe we should go back to basics, bring it back a little more in HD. So, uh, with this plant here, you know, this this is 30 days out. Uh, this is a New York diesel, and of course, it's been done uh, as we talked about in previous videos with a different set of nutrients. Um, and, and you can just see it's budding locations along the branching here. When you look at these budding locations, you can just tell that whole branch is going to be basically one bud. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them there. They run right up the branch. You know, same with up here. Same with this one. And of course, this will be our terminal bud up here. This big guy here. So this is 30 days out, I and mean, he's got 30 days to go still. So this is just an example of what I was talking about. So a few people online wanted to talk about, okay, TDS, total dissolved solids. Oh, well, yeah, you know, and uh, PPM. What's all this stuff about PPM? Well, it's a measurement. You measure CO2 and PPM. You know, you measure a lot of things in PPM. Uh, it, it's a type of measurement, okay? Then there's using a, a nutrient meter or an EC meter, an electroconductivity meter, um, which actually works better for nutrients. Um, and it actually reads different than a real TDS meter that's designed like this one for checking your water, to see your water quality for certain salts and other uh, things that, that this meter won't pick up. Okay, And, it's, it, and it's, it's not a huge fluctuation, a huge difference, but it can be a huge difference if you're using well water, if you're living in a strange place, not in a big city, and if you're not using an RO machine. You know, a reverse osmosis machine, I, I suggest to anybody, if you can get one, get one, even a filtration machine. Try and get as much of that chloramine out of, the, or out of there so that your nutrients can actually uh, have the best chance to, uh, to, to give you the, the most optimal results for the money you pay. Um, one other thing I really want to get into about that is, is, is because there's so many people talking crap about that, all that matters are these two, your EC and your TDS, okay? Or sorry, your EC and your pH, <laughs> da, 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 until I'm medicated. So uh, your pH is important because, um, of course, you got to take your pH and know where you're at. You know, you want to make sure you're running at what you're running at. Your, your, uh, your, your, what's going into your plant is very important, especially if you're dialing in new nutrients. You want to use gauges, you know, and uh, at the end, during flushing, what I do is when the water runs out the bottom, I take a reading. I get a tray and I take a reading so I can tell how many dissolved solids are coming out the bottom. And when it stops blinking, it's time to harvest. It means there's no more dissolved solids. So uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about that because a few little uh, mouthy bastards decided to come online there and want to keep going on and on and on about, uh, you know, there's no difference between a TDS and an EC meter. And I say, yes, there is. There's a difference in how it does the measurement to come up with the PPM in the end. Um, and PPM is nothing more than a measurement. That's why you can measure CO2 and PPM, you know, and various other things. So enough said about that. Um, on to the teaching part about the plant. Really at this stage, we're looking at stuff like, okay, does the plant need to be staked? You know, are we looking at a stake? And if so, you want to kind of run down the center, run your stake in, and then with a zap strap, you know, relatively easy to get. It. Just take a zap strap and make sure you leave enough rim in the center. And this will keep your buds from falling over, giving them maximum and optimal lumens and light spectrum, which is. And the lights, my lights are just up here above the plant, so I want them to come down. They're getting maximum light by staying up here than allowing them to fall over. The more further away from the light they get, the more they lose in lumens and lux. So, uh, you know, I, we don't want to be losing spectrum. That's not a cool thing. Losing spectrum is not cool. 
don't worry if you're wondering what these are we're going to talk about these in the next video but for now that's where we're at these guys here at this point you basically stick to your feeding regimen you're going to increase your food weekly um, until you get to the point of flushing you know you're going to raise up your ppms you know or your total dissolved solids if you have it um, via the your ec meter you, you're going to raise that up slowly um, you don't want the, the thing you want to watch for i'll ask my camera lady to zoom in here and just you'll see the tips of the leaves have no burn marks that's what you want to look for is that there's nothing burning and the first thing you'll notice is that the leaves will start to curl up, turn yellow, and die. Or, or turn brown, sorry, and uh, curl up and die. Um, starting usually with yellow, which is an indicator. Or starting actually with a very light, white, milky look to them. Do you really want to spot them early? Then you'll know you're just at the borderline of nutrient burn. Um, and that's where you want to pull back a bit on the nutrients. Or look at using something like Extreme Uptake by Green Planet Wholesale. Um, that's something that will help with, it has humic and then fulvic acid that will help with the uptake, which is very important. You know, being able to, uh, uptake matters everything. Like I use vermin tea for uptake and, uh, and, and that's a key factor. And, uh, you know, we're still working on our vermin tea right now. This here is going to be being brewed after we're done our next movie. It goes in here, it gets brewed for 24 hours. Then it goes into five different jugs, which are down here right now, filled with uh, distilled water. You know that we run through a, a filtration machine, um, so even our plants get better water than we do sometimes. <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> so, you know, hey, what can I say? Uh, we're having fun here at Cannabis in Canada. We're going to be making a new set. We're going to be bringing you all some new stuff. We're looking for some new improvised ideas. If any of y'all live in the valley, you know, Cannabis and Canada Society um, is a legitimate registered society as of August fifth last year. And we are looking for board members and people that are willing to get involved. We are an educational only society, so we're not operational. We don't distribute cannabis. So, uh, you know, it's not like you'll be getting involved with the criminal um, activity in any fashion. Um, basically, we're out to educate and to medicate. And uh, that's what we've always been about. Um, you know, for myself, I need to medicate all day long. And I know a few others that are like that. And for some, they only need to medicate once in a while. But anyway, um, we look forward. There's going to be a lot of changes coming this year, especially here in BC. So I hope we keep an eye on it. And uh, I look forward to what happens in California. You know, let's rock 2010. We'll see you next week. It's Jason Wilcox signing out.